Good evening, and welcome to Coach World TV. My name is Terry Yaffe, and tonight is my guest. I have Dr. Rachel Hot. Hello. And um, actually, Rachel is a Ph has a Ph.D. in clinical psychology and is a certified master practitioner and trainer of neurolinguistic programming. So tonight, we're going to hear all about NLP and what it means, and what are the tools, and what it can do for your life. So, hi, Rachel. Hi, Terry. Thanks for having me oh, on. Thank you so much for coming. Sure. I really appreciate sure. it. I'm glad to be here and to educate people about neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, we are in New York City. We've been here for 25 years. Yeah. So, what would you like to know? What, uh, you, what, what, well, what should I start um, with? What? Talk a little about either yourself and how you got into this, or NLP, okay. your choice. Okay, um, let's see. Well, I got into this since uh, 1981, so that's quite, okay. a, quite a long time ago. Um, and I, at the time, was studying um, nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. So I was always, always interested in observing people mm -hmm. and listening to people, mm -hmm. watching people. And fortunately for me, I was working with a researcher who had a very nice bookshelf. And on this bookshelf was a book called Frogs Into Princes. That was the first NLP book. Frogs Into Princes. princes. And it was a beautiful cover that looked like a Peter Max cover, because mm -hmm. of course it was the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, I read the book for its cover. I really did. I was attracted to the cover. But what I found inside was a story about a workshop that people attended, and it was a communication training workshop. And that's really what neuro-linguistic programming yeah. is. It's a, a tools for communication. You know, you and I are speaking mm -hmm. now. This is our interpersonal mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. But it's also tools for your own communication, right. your intrapersonal exactly. communication. So when you talk about neuro-linguistic programming, could you break that down for us? Sure. So people, our audience, understand sure. how this all fits together? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we talk about neuro, so that's your neurology. Mm -hmm. It's how you think. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on in your mind is typically your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Most people say that they don't talk to themselves, but right at that moment they're <laughs> talking to themselves, right? Well, yeah. Well. Okay. So we're talking to ourselves. How we're talking to ourselves, I don't know. Hopefully you're saying good things. but. <laughs> Usually it's also negative things, yes. unfortunately. We also have ways that we create pictures in our mind. Mm. So we're very interested in what's going on in the neurology, how you're thinking, what mm -hmm. you're speaking to yourself. Now, of course, the linguistic part is the language, mm -hmm. but it's the expressed language. Okay. It's also language received. There are a lot of times when people say certain things to you, you have those buttons that get pushed, mm -hmm. either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says, you know, free beer, you're like, yay. You know, if somebody <laughs> says, oh, you know, you're so selfish, it's like, boo. You know, like what mm -hmm. words mm -hmm. trigger mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And that trigger is the programming, really, right, right? that we exactly. have these programs. Right. So many people know about um, computers, right? Exactly. And so we know that we have this hard wire hardware mm -hmm. that's our mm -hmm. uh, how we are fixed, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. in the neuro linguistic programming model, and I'm going to say NLP now because it really that's is a, a mouthful, yeah, okay. that we are looking at how to change mm -hmm. the hardware, right? So we have software. So we have techniques in NLP. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's interpersonal communication. Mm -hmm. It's more just awareness, right? how we're speaking, mm -hmm. whether you understand me, whether I understand mm -hmm. you. But a lot of times it's also, what am I saying to myself? And inside of that, we have techniques to help people change. Okay. You know, I did NLP, actually, in I remember. the summer of 03. I did their extensive summer course, and then I went on to do another course, um, that, and that was pre-coaching. Uh, so I did the NLP, and then I went on to do my coaching training. And as we were talking at dinner, um, I, I said to Rachel, I, I'm not sure I remember everything that I learned eight years ago, but I think I've incorporated it. And certainly some of the techniques that I learned, I still utilize with clients. It, it does so, get integrated. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really about, um, you know, rapport building, mm -hmm. right? After a while, that just 
should be right. a, an unconscious competence, mm. right? But we often say first you have to learn what you're doing so you become conscious mm -hmm. and at that point you may be consciously incompetent, mm. right? right. Exactly. And then eventually um, you practice and practice these rapport skills or understanding people, mm -hmm. how to get along with others. Mm -hmm. Eventually it's conscious competence. Right. And then maybe what you have is unconscious competence. It could be. Hopefully. I don't know. Unconscious something. <laughs> oh, that competence. Well, it's, so it's automatic, it's, right? right? Exactly. Right? Uh, yes, exactly. Um, so how, how do you work with clients a little okay. bit? What are some of those wonderful tools and juicy okay. tidbits that All right, you might give you, want to sure, I'll, share? Sure, I'll say. So basically, um, I'm the co-director of the NLP mm -hmm. Center of New York. And at the NLP Center, we have students who mm -hmm. come and study with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We also have um, clients who come. Mm -hmm. So for example, a client may come because um, they're just working on issues about believing in their ability to be successful mm -hmm. and they want to um, be more successful, right? They right. could already be successful, mm -hmm. they want to be more right. successful. And in the interviewing uh, process, I may say, okay, um, I wonder where else have you been able to feel confident? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do a search for confidence. And in their confidence, um, they'll start to reconnect to that feeling. Mm. And then mm -hmm. we might do another search and another search. So we're really building the memory, remember, like that software mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of confidence being part of their fund foundation. Right. Right. So that's, that's a way that I would help them. And inside of that, um, we really kind of like an acting exercise. You, you go back into the memory mm -hmm. of that time when you right. were confident, right. so you can really build right. that. Would, and I know there are lots of different techniques, but one thing what you had mentioned was anchoring. So would you take that confidence and what they learned and be able to anchor it yes. in some way? Well, the, that the anchor, you know, most people um, understand, you know, anchoring with the idea that you're walking down the street and you hear some music, mm -hmm. you hear Beatles, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you you remember that uh -huh. year, mm -hmm. you know, the 60s uh -huh. when you were doing the twist or something, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden it just takes you back, oh. right? So that confidence story would be like, okay, where does it take you back? And then how are you going to remember it? How are you going to know mm -hmm. so the next time you have to make a cold call, you have to go in for an interview, mm -hmm. how are you going to mm -hmm. feel that again, oh. right? Okay. So sometimes you can do actually a, 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 a physical anchor, uh -huh. you remind yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the feeling and you, you put two fingers together mm -hmm. that you don't normally put together. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. it's, just a, it's just a reminder. Because mm -hmm. ultimately the experience, the phone, the, the uh -huh. interview, that should be yeah. the, the uh -huh. anchor. Right. But most people know about speaking to themselves. So if you say the word confidence, mm -hmm. that could be an anchor. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a visual, right. you know, yeah. you know like uh -huh. you just remember that time right. when you got the A plus in school, mm. right? I had a I had a client who told me he made um, seven goals in a soccer game, and that for him was like the best right. memory mm. ever. Mm -hmm. And he said maybe the other team was really bad, but it didn't uh, matter. Uh, he right. got seven he goals. Had a, a sense of how he felt. Yeah, so he could just see that mm -hmm. soccer field in his mind, right, and then walk into, mm. you know, that next mm -hmm. interview or mm. wherever you need right. confidence. Yeah, that's great. You know, some of the things like uh, you talked about, um, I will have sometimes clients do visioning, mm -hmm. and how do they feel? You know, I do a future self exercise, mm -hmm. and then it's that's kind of an anchor for them and they name it. So, you know, if a situation comes up, how would so-and-so handle this? Right. And then they remember. Right. Or sometimes I ask clients if they have a picture of themselves and how they felt, you know, they were on vacation and they felt great and outward to have that in their house or do things That's right. so that they can always remember yeah, it's how a, they felt it. So yeah, it could it's be, a good technique. It could be yeah. visual. Yes. Yes, you have basically, you know, ways of thinking, either visual, auditory, or this kinesthetic, uh -huh. but we're mm -hmm. saying, you know, touch, mm -hmm. which can be just a physical touch, right. or you have a, a strong mm -hmm. feeling. So sure, you know, uh, what people put on their screensaver, mm -hmm. right, you know, what you have on your desk that might be, you know, a post-it, all of those right. are really good techniques for 
reminding you of your ability. Um, you know, it's really about your strengths, your abilities. Right. One thing that I really like about NLP is that there is a belief that everybody has all the resources they need. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's, that's so important yes. to remember that yeah. even if you're mm -hmm. not feeling great today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to take a moment and ask yourself, yes. you know, what's inside of me? What do I have? Um, so that it, it lets you go deep within to bring out the, the resource. Right, exactly. Right? And resources, you know, we mentioned confidence, but it could even be um, a sense of humor, right? It could be compassion or patience. You know, a lot of people need patience, you know, nowadays. With nowadays. <laughs> always. <for sure. laughs> but, yeah, um, one of the things that I do with clients in, in coaching, and it, it's, you know, it's the same track, different, different words. Well, I think it's just it's, a great technology yeah. to use in your coaching. Really, yeah. that's what it is. Exactly. Um, you know, we believe, I believe as coaches and most of coaches believe that clients have all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's just helping them get to the answers mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. asking questions and mm -hmm. helping them go down the different avenues they need to to get to the answers. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that in so, NLP we have a certain tool to ask those questions. Mm. Um, so in, in in a training with us, like when you said the extensive training, mm -hmm. uh, 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 what we call our level one coach right. practitioner mm -hmm. training is actually 144 hours. I don't know if you realize how many hours you had done that summer. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a long time ago, yeah, but it was 144 was. hours. Wow. And one of the modules is uh, language specificity, asking questions, really being precise. Mm -hmm. So right. you know, if if you and I were on a team mm -hmm. and we were um, told, listen, you know, Terry, Rachel, you have to work as a team. Mm -hmm. You and I have to make sure we understand what that word team means, right? right. Because some people are really good at, at tennis, and they may say, well, great, I'll just, you know, go, yeah. I'll do right. it, uh -huh. right? And other people are, are like, well, wait, we're a basketball team, and we mm -hmm. need to pass it mm -hmm. off. What kind of team are we, right? right? And we're, how we're going to be together? How we're going to work together? Right, right. I might just say, "We'll work as a team. I'll do my thing. You do mm -hmm. yours. We'll come back." Mm -hmm. Whereas you, no, no. I want to be like this. <laughs> you know, okay. right? What kind yeah. of team do you want right. to be? Right, exactly. So, so it's a it's a classic thing. A couple, you know, says, "Honey, I'll be home soon." You're not home. You said you'd be home soon. You know, my soon is right. So you know, it's um, having to uh, define. Mm -hmm. from each perspective right. what soon means. To right. him it might be three hours, to you it might be five minutes. Right, 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 you immediate. Know. Right. And in um, learning how to ask questions for specificity, mm. you gain greater understanding, right. you feel understood, and it may f feel like it takes a little bit more time, but it's worth it because right. typically misunderstandings go into a fight and, and yeah. then you have yes. to, you know, take time to figure out who said what and who was right and we say everybody was really right, right? Just you It's all perspective. It's really that's what it comes down to, really, yeah, is all yeah, perspective. Yeah. So what else um, do you want to talk about with um, NLP? Well I guess linguistic program? I guess there's um, another technique that I really like which is um, called reframing. Mm. And yeah. um, with reframing, it could be uh, another presupposition in NLP. We say every behavior, every symptom, every um, issue that you're dealing with, uh, every problem, every habit has a positive intention. Okay. So let's say people come to stop smoking. You know, I'll get clients mm. who want to stop okay. smoking. And um, I'll ask them, you know, what does smoking do for you? You know, and, and a lot of times they'll have, you know, well, it, you know, it, it helps me relax, mm. right? It makes me feel like I belong. Mm. Um, it was so long ago that I started, but um, it, it was a way to connect with friends. So we look at those answers mm. as positive intentions to f figure out how can we satisfy that positive intention? How can we have somebody learn how to relax other ways? Right. Okay. How can you feel that you belong in another way? Right. How can you still feel connected mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, that you don't have right. to um, have a habit? So it's about changing the habit, right. but keeping the positive intention. Uh, 